With the armor values and Nomer being so high, physical damage has suffered the most, but the warrior pushes through and maintains a spot in the meta as a great damage dealer. I think that's more than enough proof to know that this class isn't going anywhere, so if you don't have one at 40 already, this is the video for you. Also, if you're new here or if you're old here, don't forget to subscribe. So in phase 1, I had a ton of fun leveling the warrior. Victory Rush was very powerful and it went a long way. But around the early level 20s, you kind of saw that drop off a good bit. In BFD, the Consumed by Rage and Raging Blow rune combo was extremely powerful in raids, and just whenever I was wondering if this was going to be the leveling meta, both of these runes received some nerfs. And that is honestly probably for the best. Having to level up while trying to maintain 80 rage all the time would have just been a complete nightmare. So now Frenzied Assault on your pants not only makes way more sense for leveling in general, but is also more powerful. Same thing with Raging Blow, we're going to ditch that on our chest for Flagellation as soon as you can get it, even before we have Berserker Rage. And for our gloves, we could stick with Victory Rush, but things are going to live a lot longer on your way to level 30, and I don't really think it's worth it because you have to heal up just as frequently anyway. It's not like you can skip eating or first aiding entirely just because of Victory Rush. So because of that, I'd rather just spam Quick Strike single target, which isn't the best ability now, but at least lets us fish for some fat overpower procs. Of course, we want to do BFD as much as possible for some sick gear and try and get from 25 to 30 as soon as possible. Level 30 is really critical for a lot of reasons. Getting Berserker Stance just to intercept is pretty cool, but mainly it's going to unlock Berserker Rage at level 32, which with Flagellation is insane. But also at level 30, we get Sweeping Strikes, which is going to let us kill two mobs at the same time. This is where you should probably switch up your setup a bit. I found the best results with Endless Rage. That way you can have more Rage for more Cleaves during the Sweeping Strikes while we're doing this two mob thing. I also found Tactical Mastery to be extremely extremely valuable for this because we're going to be stance dancing a lot. So we really want to make sure we have as much range as possible for that big spam cleave sweeping strikes window with flagellation up. That way we can just chunk these mobs down. Towards the bottom of the arms tree, get cruelty and then your weapon spec unless if you're using a sword because the second to last row of arms just kind of sucks and we're going to respec at 40 for mortal strike anyway. You can also keep around some single minded fury gloves and two one handers to swap on while traveling for that 10% movement speed boost if you have this rune. Alternatively, you can run quick strike on your gloves and then kill mobs one by one, but I found this to be weirdly harder. Like, I'd kill two mobs easier than one, and i just end up taking way more damage doing them one at a time, and it'd be way slower. And if you are doing that, you don't super need Tactical Mastery, but you're probably going to want it at 36 for Whirlwind anyway, so it's just kind of better to have it sooner, especially when you have Berserker Rage for Flagellation. If you know you can kill two in a row back to back without having to stop and heal, you can get one really, really low, and then drag it into the next one, and then pop Sweeping Strikes, and then execute Cleave it onto the full health one. If you do that with a bunch of Rage and Flagellation up, and it crits, you can pretty much just like one shot the second mob, or you can just finish it up afterwards. That way, you avoid taking damage from them both at once in case you're in some kind of scenario where you can't do the double cleave thing with sweeping strikes. For the weapons, if you already have Deadly Strike of the Hydra from phase one, you can run that the entire time, which is what I did. Rollwind Axe is of course going to be better, and you can get that at any level you want after 30, depending on how much help you can get with it, or how many items you can buy, if you can afford to just buy the items. If you can't get any help, you can just kind of farm the stuff on your way up, and then maybe have somebody help you kill Cyclonian. As Alliance, you can just skip it and get the Bonebiter Axe from the SM quest, which is probably way less of a headache. You also get the Commanding Shout Rune from SM, which is pretty good to have, so it's a good idea to go in there and get it. And now you might have noticed I didn't really mention any Phase 2 runes up until just now, and that is because they are all just such a huge huge pain to get. Every single belt rune is an absolute nightmare. I thought Focus Rage would be easy. Yeah, it's a 35 elite, but I thought it was going to be like the Wetlands Owl elite from phase one, and that is not the case. You absolutely cannot solo this. And as a matter of fact, you can't solo the other two belt runes either. And since it's pretty late in the phase, it'll probably be pretty hard to find people to help you do the Stormguard elites for Blood Surge or the Dark Riders for precise timing. So because you need help with them anyway, I recommend just watching the LFG chat for people doing that stuff and then jumping in whenever you can find a group, no matter what level you are. Those two are awesome anytime after after level 30 because that's whenever you get slam and focus rage could be great even at level one if you get somebody to carry you through it the boot runes are pretty unique in the fact that they're all defensive stuff but none of them really help your leveling at all besides maybe in rage regeneration but because this is a three minute cooldown i don't really think it's high impact enough to prioritize because of this i actually just didn't use any phase two runes to level up with which was kind of boring to be honest i don't see why they have to gatekeep the runes so hard but if you can get carried through them at a low level i'd highly suggest doing that just to keep it fun and interesting outside of the double pulling there is really not all that much to focus on. Because the double pull is pretty intense, it's a good idea to have some world buffs, maybe drink some cheap consumables, and sharpen your weapon. You kind of do start to feel like a vanilla WoW warrior doing this, and not in a good way. This will most likely be the worst leveling period in Season of Discovery for Warriors, just because we don't have Mortal Strike or Bloodthirst and Whirlwind for the most part of it. I know you guys will ask about Devastate, but since it's nerfs in Phase 2, it's literally so bad, I wouldn't even try and kill a single mob this way. It's horrible. Unless you just really, really like it, I would stick to using a two-hander. It also makes it so we can't use 
frenzied assault on her pants. For skill progression, you could literally just not train anything until level 40 and not really notice that much. There are some base damage increases that'll help you a little bit, like overpower rank 2 at 28, cleave rank 2 at 30, execute heroic strike and battle shout at 32. Also, of course, there's berserker rage at 32. You absolutely want to train that as soon as possible and go get berserker stance if you haven't already. And then at 36, there is Whirlwind, and that's pretty much it. I think I only stopped to train at 30, 32, and 36, just because the base damage increases really don't matter that much. They're like 10 extra damage. And I guess with Flagellation, that makes it like 12 damage. But if you're killing mobs just fine, I wouldn't really worry about like Cleave Rank 2 over Cleave Rank 1. Killing two mobs at once consistently with sweeping strikes is really the main thing that you can do to increase your leveling and questing speed, so you really want to focus on that. You can, of course, dungeon grind. You could find some good cleave groups that are still going, and you just really want to make sure that you have wind fury in those, but you would run the same exact setup with endless rage and spamming cleave and stuff. The thing is, cleave isn't like the best ability ever. It's just good because we can always hit two targets, and we don't have bloodthirst or mortal strike yet, and slam is pretty unusable without those phase two runes. So while we're leveling, we're kind of just missing some abilities. Ideally, with the five charges of sweeping strikes, we spend and two of those on cleaves and then one on an overpower or an execute. The worst thing about using cleave is that you're causing that auto attack to not generate you any rage. And we could theoretically convert that rage to damage with more abilities if we had those abilities, if that makes sense. So instead we're spending rage to duplicate an auto attack, which then gets duplicated back onto the first target with the sweeping strikes, and Whirlwind works the same way. Which also means that it's consuming two charges of sweeping strikes because you're hitting two things with the one cleave on both the targets, it's two attacks. Now you might be asking, dude, why don't you just pull a ton of rage before the sweeping strikes and then not run endless rage and you could absolutely do that but you'd have to stay in battle stance the whole time and not being able to jump into berserker stance will prevent you from whirlwinding berserker raging and intercepting so it's less of a big deal between 30 and 36 when you don't have whirlwind but the main thing that you guys are going to find out as soon as you start doing this is that pulling the mobs and getting them next to each other is actually super annoying you could range pull both mobs, but then you can't charge because the range shots will put you in combat. You could charge one and then just walk it into the other one to pull the second mob, but like, it's kind of wonky, you'll get dazed, it's just kind of weird and messy, you could get slowed or something. Which is why I really prefer to charge, jump into Zerker stance, then intercept the second mob, pop Berserker Rage, then go back into battle. Then, if I didn't have Blood Rage, I'd want to start cleaving as soon as possible to get use out of the flagellation bonus that I got from the Berserker Rage. But most of the time, you are going to have Blood Rage, so you can just auto-attack the second mob while you wait for the first mob to get there. Then, because we have Endless Rage, we'll probably have like 50-60 Rage, then Bloodthirst, Sweeping Strikes, do two cleaves, then execute nice and clean. And that's why I ended up liking Endless Rage so much, because it just lets you get that Rage right when you want it, right before the Sweeping Strikes window. And it kind of makes up for the fact that we're not generating any Rage with our cleaves. Also, mashing the Execute just to get out of combat sooner is totally fine, because we're going to need to heal up after this, and we're going to do that stance dancing stuff again whenever we pull the next two mobs. So because of that, zeroing out our Rage doesn't really have any negative consequences. If we had like a full Rage bar going into the next mobs, we would just lose it while we're eating, and then we'd have to stand stance anyway. There's also this really weird bug I found where I charge one mob, and then I intercept instantly to the next mob, and it doesn't pull the first mob, which I thought was super insanely weird. It reminded me of playing on a buggy private server, so you might want to let the mob hit you once, or auto attack at once if you can afford it, because after you intercept the second mob, if you have to run back and then you get dazed or slowed, it's just really, you really don't want to move after you intercept, basically, is what I'm saying. When phase 3 comes out, this sweeping strike stuff will absolutely still be the go-to, but at least then we'll have our end of tree ability, either bloodthirst or mortal strike, so that'll be really nice. Try really hard to get a Thermplug's rocket cleaver from Nomer, not only because it's bis this phase, but also because it'll be pre-bis next phase. And since we're only going from level 40 to 50, it'll be a fantastic weapon to level up with. In summary, I really enjoyed the warrior, but like I said, it's not the powerhouse that it was in phase 1. We're not one-shotting things and spam healing ourselves with victory rush like we were at level 8, but it's still great, and I think if you're good at it, it holds up to other classes, unlike normal vanilla warrior, even though it doesn't really feel like it. Because whenever you think about it, we're getting 20% attack speed, a 25% increased damage cooldown, and 25% more rage. Those are some huge numbers compared to other classes. Most classes just kind of get some different cool ways to deal their damage, but we just get more damage. So if you master two targets at once, don't be surprised if you just start steamrolling the levels, especially with that 100% increased XP buff, you'll be 40 in no time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're looking to level something else in Sod, I have a video for every class in this big playlist that you can check out right here.